Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint this uh, blueberries with a butterfly. I'll be showing you start to finish how to do it tonight. Got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat during our painting tutorial here. So if you've got questions, you can ask those in chat and we'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm going to be using a 9 by 12 inch canvas today. This is a Fredericks Mixed Media Canvas board. Can you really use any size? I actually cropped the photo um, to square, but it just felt like I kind of wanted a little bit of breathing room around here. Um, it kind of took out all of that open space when I cropped it to square, but you can do that if you want to um, and maybe just make your butterfly smaller on the canvas. Um, as far as brushes go, I'm going to be using um, some Princeton brushes. They're our brush sponsor, so thank you to them. And for Fredericks, our canvas sponsor, we don't uh, get paid by them or anything. We just use their stuff and they're great. Um, all right, so I'll be using, I'm not really sure actually. <laughs> <laughs> I just grabbed a, a variety of brushes. As always, I have not painted this ahead of time, so you're getting it to see it live as I figure out how to paint it. And um, most of the time, hopefully, it'll go. Oh, go. <laughs> and I, most of the time, uh, I feel like I, I kind of know what I'm doing, but uh, there are the occasions where I don't. So <laughs> you close. be the judge. <laughs> it's close enough. <laughs> close enough. <laughs> So I've got some angle brushes, different sizes here, and then I've got a few round brushes in different sizes, a couple filberts and flats, and then I did grab my um, Aspen short angle bright and short oval filbert to um, do some blending with, and I've also got my two blender brushes for that as well. So um, those are just the Princeton Velvet Touch blenders. They're really great. Um, all right, so those are kind of the brushes I think I might need, and uh, we'll see as we go how uh, what which ones we actually use. All right, uh, let's go over our colors. Got carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, quinacridone magenta, cadmium yellow light, thalo green yellow shade, thalo blue green shade, ultramarine blue, uh, unbleached titanium, titanium white, and gloss glazing liquid. If you missed that, I have all the lists of the materials and everything down in the description. So, and also places to buy that help support our channel. All right, let's get going here with our first little bit. I think I'm just going to kind of lightly sketch out uh, where our, um, actually, let me think. Yeah, let's just use the chalk for it because I don't think I want to take the time to paint it. And so I'm just going to use the chalk. I already kind of sort of did just to get my placement and I was pretty happy with this initial drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and just use regular school chalk blue and show you what I did. So I kind of started with the butterfly because it's sort of our main focal point. I made it a little bit bigger even than the photo and put him at an angle facing in towards these blueberry clusters right here. So he's actually kind of right in the middle. If you say that this is the middle of our canvas right here, he's kind of his head is just up to the side here a little bit and his little body right in here and then once you get this line then you can kind of angle from the um, thoracic or I don't know what this is called but thorax, thorax there we go thoracic close. is like close to Jurassic is that what yes. I was trying to say yes not that <laughs> moth anatomy 101 <laughs> thoracic thoracic thank you thank you Mark Mr. Mark mm -hmm. we'll be teaching class Class there. <laughs> so this one is shorter because it's facing us a little bit. It's tilted up towards us, so it's a little bit uh, foreshortened there. And there we go. So kind of that sh shape. Then the bottom is just a circle, kind of half circles right here and here. Also this side shorter than the other side. And then leaf and leaves. I'm not going to do as many leaves as in this picture. This is actually taken from our garden this year. We got a huge, huge tub of blueberries off this bush. It was yeah. great. The first year we had it, we got four blueberries. Four. <laughs> and I was like, literally four. Okay. And we were like, um, not sure if this is going to 
be, but okay, we're going to, you know, we give it its own like dedicated bed and we put some strawberries in here so you can see the strawberry leaves kind of in and around this picture. Um, and then the second year we got a couple, uh, maybe three or four pints. And then this year I think we got a good gallon to yeah. easily. Yeah. It was great. Sweet. Yeah. So the berries themselves are kind of an oval shape. We all know what a blueberry looks like pretty much, hopefully. If you haven't tried one, do. But I'm sure everybody has. Fridge. Huh? You want to go get some out of the fridge? You can. Yeah, you want to show them. We still have a bunch left, too. We've, I, we have kind of gl glutted ourselves. Yeah, we eat them. <laughs> like every day. Every day for so every meal. <laughs> For a few couple weeks there, and now we're it's amazing how much I pacing yourself. Is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, well, that's not a lot. No, yeah, I thought they would be gone already, but no, they're still hanging around. Okay, so like that there, and then we've got this one here, real close to the swing. There's one kind of behind, one sort of angled this way, one here, a little bit of one kind of peeking out behind here, and then. This big one right here, and the ins the the little part that sticks out here is kind of another circle that's on top of it. There, some leaves here. We do a big one right here. One coming out that way. These will be our main big leaves, and then everything else is going to be. Might do another one right here or something, but. Everything else has been going to be kind of dark and indistinct. So that's kind of our main composition there. And again, if you want to crop it square, you can cut off all of that and you still have a pretty decent composition, but I kind of like this open space. So I'm going to grab my large flat here. This is the eight flat. And I'm going to mix up kind of a light blue green for the background. And I think I'm going to use my ultramarine blue. The ultramarine blue has a little bit of a purpley tone. It'll look really nice against this yellow. Our color, our color scheme is kind of a, is kind of a um, analogous. I mean, it's it's a little bit wider than a full analogous because analogous is technically three five colors, three to five. So it would end here and here, but I'm going for the full range. And then we'll we'll do a little bit of, of uh, a pop of this red violet in the blueberries, too, just for a little pop of color. But we're kind of going with a f almost straight analogous color scheme today. And I think that's why it looks so well. If you're wondering how to blend your colors or how to mix colors that look good together, um, your analogous colors are always going to look good when you mix them. Um, anywhere from one primary to another, you're going to be able to get a good blend of colors. You know, when, when you start having problems is when you go to the next primary color and try to mix that in with um, the rest because then you start getting into these cross, cross um, colors that are... Um, complementary and will create kind of muddy colors but any of these here together any of these these two the yellow and the blue primaries mix just a, any number of beautiful range of colors that are going to look well together and we're going to add white to make this one a little bit more muted and, and then we're going to also add I think I'm going to add a little bit of green And we'll see if that, that's probably a little too bright still. I want it to be a little bit more muted. So I think I'm going to use the unbleached titanium. The unbleached titanium has just got um, uh, kind of some neutral colors. If you don't have it, you can kind of mix it with sort of ochres and umbers. So yeah, burnt sienna, burnt umber, um, yellow oxide, yellow ochre, any of those colors. You're just wanting kind of an off-white that has a warm tint to it. It doesn't have to be this exact. So I hardly ever use that just straight up. I usually, oh, that's nice. Look how that muted that color too. That yellow in, in there um, kind of helped mute that blue, that purple in the blue, because that ultramarine blue has a lot of purple undertone to it. So it really created a nice blue here for me. 
that's really nice. And I think I'm going to grab some of that brighter blue and kind of mix the two together as I go. And when you're doing this kind of mixing um, of the wet into wet, just do small sections and kind of get it blended sort of the way you want. Don't over blend it. Let the brush stroke show. That's what makes it kind of interesting. And then um, just work your wet edges. So um, usually I start in the corner. I kind of started right there up against that, that uh, butterfly this time. But um, I'm going to make that leaf a little bit smaller right there. And then I'm going to go over it. I'm putting my paint on fairly thickly though. That will also kind of give me more coverage. I'm going to get a little bit more of green and have that in this as a third color to do down here where there's some green kind of showing. But again, just kind of working my wet edge. And then this, this edge is not going to, um, I'm not going to get to that right away. So I'm just going to feather that out so that I have kind of a soft edge to work into when I when I choose to blend that area. And then go back down here and let's kind of continue blending this. And if you want to go a little bit darker in some areas, you can get a little bit more of your darker tones so that you have a little bit of value shift between the lights and the dark here. But this is mostly just background and there is some really dark in this area that happens so I am going to go a little bit darker when I get into this area here so mostly just going to be working this outer edge get some more of that color try to get a color that's similar to what I started with and then I'm going to do the same thing in this direction just kind of blend it over and you can see even if it was a little bit wet, it's going to blend in just, or a little bit dry, it's still going to blend in just fine. With this background, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it, so don't, don't get too fussy with having it look a certain way. Just trying to get your paint down. You can always go back over it later if you want to. Add more details to it, add more layers. You'll probably need two layers on here to get good coverage. But using either a filbert or sometimes I'll use a filbert for this because it'll give me softer edges. Use the flat this time, but really no right or wrong. Just whatever looks good to you. you Getting do. some more green here. What were you saying? I said you do. What were you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, correct me up. <laughs> All right. There we go. So, and then as we get in here, we're going to start getting darker, so I'm not going to go too far in with this lighter color. to start going into a darker shade that looks really nice though I like I like that and so you kind of get to see sort of the shape that we're going for with that dark area too it's kind of a triangle almost all right so I'm going to grab some phthalo blue some of my green and then just to make it dark I can either do like a burnt sienna might do a little bit of that. Might go with a little bit of magenta. That's going to be the opposite of green, so it'll give it really nice purpley tone with that with that phthalo blue against that, and that phthalo the phthalo blue and the magenta will make a purple. And so mixing that with the green always makes a nice dark neutral. Tone. I'm going to get a little bit of my ultra unbelief burnt umber. Man, cannot see my colors tonight. Burnt umber. Okay, let's try that. I think that that one's going to be good. All right, so kind of a little bit of you can see the ones I pulled from <laughs> all those, those three and those two. And 
what I'm going to do is just kind of go around my stick, but go on top of the leaves. So I'm going to put my leaves on top of this color, and that will darken them up. And then I think I'm just going to kind of blend out into the color that I have. a very blue green. I'm going to go for a little bit of warmer green, like a little closer to reddish or yellow green. And so then let's just mix these two together. So I've got this and I've got my background color. I'm just going to mix a mid-tone and just use that over here and kind of do some light wispies that maybe have vague leafy shapes. So we're gonna be able to see this. I'm not really like fully blending it into the background. I'm just kind of creating little leaf shapes that are living back here. You can see that how it just very lightly. I don't need a ton of detail here. And I'm going right over my butterfly too, so don't worry too much about him. I'm gonna get some more of that background color and just kinda blend that out a little bit so it's not so so hard. Just want it nice and soft. to know can I use liquid white or something else when painting with acrylic to help the colors blend better on a canvas liquid white that is an oil paint I believe that's the Bob Ross oil mm. paint medium so don't I would not use that um, if I'm not mistaken I think that's what that is um, so you can't use that with acrylics um, but you can use um, glazing medium I have glazing medium here that's a gloss glazing medium um, that you can use um, it's got a little bit of extender in it so it'll help you kind of have a little bit extra dry time um, or there's an open medium that golden makes that um, it does take quite a bit of time to dry that's why I don't use it tend to not use it but this um, open acrylic medium gloss and you can add it to your glazing medium just a little few drops of it in the glazing medium and then when you add it and work it into your um, paint it um, extends that drying time quite a bit so this dried here and you see how that kind of had a hard line right there I don't know if you can see that underneath but I had a hard line there, so I'm going to try to break that up somewhat. Use some of this unbleached titanium and go back over it just a little bit so that it blends out a little bit and doesn't have that hard edge. Get a little bit of that ultramarine blue back in too. I'm just going to go ahead and bring that all the way down to that corner and up around my blueberries and then inside my blueberries you want to be sure that you're getting that dark color around them and I'm not worried too much about getting them getting it on them because they'll we'll fix it later main thing is just getting color down on the canvas <coughs> excuse me but yeah, we're getting some nice 
um, flow of colors and values here. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Get some more of that phthalo blue and maybe do some blue over here by these ones a little bit around where they are. Down here. And I thought about tinting the whole thing with like a yellow or something like that. So if you wanted to do that, you could. Um, I just decided not to. But either way, if you had a little bit of yellow underneath, you'd have another whole, you know, layer of interest happening. And right here, this stuff that I'm doing here, I'm trying to kind of make it look like maybe there's some leaves and things happening back in the back back ground that we're just seeing like blurry edges of. Um, and I'm gonna wipe that out because I got a lot of dark color on here so I want to push back this dark so I got to clean my brush out here and get some of this lighter color now and get a little bit of that ultramarine blue, just the same colors as I was using in my background. And I'm not gonna try to color match it exactly, it does not matter. I'm just gonna try to get it close, and then while that's still wet, I wanna go back over those edges though and blend back into them. And I think that that's the thing that um, uh, this, this you know blending um, tends to trip people up because they, they're just taking a long time mixing their colors with acrylics. You can't, um, if you're, if you know you're going to be blending this, you may want to make a bunch of this background color. If you have, if you're kind of slow with blending, um, do that. You make an, make extra background color so that you can blend it and grab it really quickly. So you don't have to do what I'm doing here and stop to blend. Cause if you can't get it really quickly, this is going to dry and then you won't have the time to, blend it back over and what happens is this will start to dry and then say I this area here is is wet so I'm going to show you what what not to do here um, I'm going to make a hole on my on my painting let me do this first and then I'll show you because it doesn't really matter it's going to be as long as I catch it while it's drying it'll do what I'm telling what I'm going to show you but I'm going to use a color that's not quite as light as this just because I don't want it to lift off so much of it. But so up here, say that, that I was trying to do this blending that I was just doing down here, right? But my area was dry or almost dry. As soon as acrylics get to that stage where they're almost dry, they, um, they will... Um, not accept any more paint and they'll start to lift and so you'll see what happens especially if I add what watered down paint there was a little spot of color there that was kind of wet you see what happened it's gonna pull it right off the canvas okay so that's what happens when you over blend into colors when they're trying to dry um, so I wouldn't try to blend into any of this right now because this is way too dry. Um, you only want to blend into an area that you just laid down and very quickly go into it. Um, you can't let it set for any length of time or it will, it will do like that. Now, the solution to that is either one, to let it dry completely, come back to it later, or I can get some very, very thick paint, not very watery, and just lay it down really thickly and not blend over that area, just like very quickly and thick, thick application of paint, dabbing around the edges a little bit, but see how it's still wanting to come up there. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a slippery slope because then what happens is then you'll start to blend and then you'll ca catch more patches that are still drying and then you'll just end up with a bunch of little holes of, of color in your canvas and that I'm, I need to not do it because I, I almost did it right there too. And it's <laughs> going to do the same thing. So you've got to just let them dry. Um, 
is no matter how much you want to try to do another layer or still blend or, and it doesn't look good and you you know like this doesn't look good and I need another layer on here but I cannot do it now if I do it now it will do that and it will lift off the canvas because it's starting to dry and it gets sticky when it starts to dry all right avoid so the temptation to fix it right avoid it don't, don't don't do it don't touch don't touch no touchy okay I'm going to get the ultramarine blue. I think my base is going to be ultramarine blue for my um, blueberries, but I'm going to add just a tiny touch of burnt umber. That's going to neutralize it and make it more of a uh, natural-looking blue. And I'm just going to kind of try to put in those base, the base layer here. And they're going to not look great because I have green over the top of them and stuff, but I'm just going to get some color down on the, the areas that they're going to go. Right in there. Big one right here. And ultramarine blue is transparent. So if you want, if it's bothering you that it's going on, you know, transparent, you can add a little bit of of an opaque color like um, titanium white or even a little tiny bit of black. But it's not going to bother anything to have them bright like this underneath. Um, and that white is kind of making them a little bit more saturated looking anyways. Kind of nice, nice color. All right, going to get a little bit of my burnt umber, a little bit of burnt sienna. I still have that blue on my brush, so I haven't cleaned it out. I'm just mixing a neutral gray-brown here. I got a little bit of the unbleached titanium. And I'm going to go over my stick, my stem here, branch, whatever the word is. Stick stem branch. We are fully in art brain right now because I cannot come up with words for the woody part. Yes. And there's some leaves here hiding this, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in and then we'll hide it with our leaves later. This one is kind of thin, so I don't want to go too thick with it. I'm going to try to get it in thin here. Looks good. Okay. And you can just use whatever brush is comfortable for you. Yes, yeah. If I'm using the blender, but yeah, you don't have to use this if you don't have it or whatever. Just a round brush. Something about the width of your branch is about what you want. So I'm using it on its side just because of the side edge. If I used it flat, it would be too wide. Okay, so that looks pretty good coming down. I really like how that background is turning out. It looks kind of like a oil painting almost, you know, like that, I don't know, um, David Jansen or whatever he does, those kind of florals with this kind of soft, dreamy background. I really like that look. All right, so that's dry enough. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a second coat here in just a couple places on my green. I'm going to get a little bit of that burnt umber just to add and give some of that darker color. Thalo blue and burnt umber here. A little bit of thalo green added. I'm going to have, have to add some more thalo green here. Okay, there we go. So nice and dark up here. I just want to kind of come back in and do a few little pops of that really dark color. Here and there. And that's still wet, so avoid that. And it's just enough dry now that it will lift again if we try to mess with it. So stay away from that. And, and you know that because, like, the brush starts to drag or grab or... Um, 
Well, you can kind of see, I mean, you can kind of tell just by the length of time that it's been setting, you know, um, so I know, you know, if I've, especially if I've spent a lot of time blending and doing other stuff, I just know if this is still wet over here, it's, it's because it's starting to get sticky, you know, um, and you can see that it's shiny. So see that shiny spot? That's how you can tell that it's still wet most of the time. Some, sh some colors will dry slightly shiny and especially if you have a thick part of your paint that has dried um, and it's, you know, it's a th thick clump of paint. Sometimes those will dry dark, um, or, or shiny, I mean. Um, so it doesn't always mean that it's wet, but it, a lot of times that's a good indicator that your paint is still wet as if you've got a shiny bit on there. I'm going to add some yellow now. So that was kind of our background colors. And now we're going to add our leaf color, which is going to be a little bit more of a yellow green. So adding in that, the, that cadmium yellow light. And this is still fairly dark. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of map out where I want to put these. The leaf is point, or the, the, the um, wing is pointing upward here. So I'm gonna go, kind of go out with this leaf here. Fill that in. Okay. I'm going to highlight these so it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to kind of start setting in some leaves here, though. And these are all pretty dark still. I'm just going to kind of dab in some random leafy shapes too. Just kind of using the corner of my brush and just press, pressing down to get some little leaf like shapes. There's a long leaf right here. kind of go slow with adding these leaves because I don't want to overwhelm the whole thing with a bunch of, although there's a ton of leaves in this area, so. And leaves you know, have that cupped shape, right? Kind of like the palm of your hand, but when they're on their side, they look like a line. And when they're tilted away from us, they look more like a like a triangle or an oval shape. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you're, what? Oh, sorry, I thought you were doing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> sorry, I thought we were trying to communicate. Con <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> exactly. Mr. Q, sorry. Sorry, all our alien friends watching or know, know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Brush is not staying together for me. There we go. And come down here and just kind of tucks into these blueberries there. So we'll be adding highlights to these, so I'm just laying the groundwork for the highlights to go on. What? 
So this is a moth, right? Technically? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I'm not so. sure what kind it is. I don't know. I or, called it a butterfly, but yeah, it's probably moth. Or not those kind of people. No. I, I know there's a way you can tell. I think the fuzzy body gives it away as a moth. Yeah. I think that's part of the moth-like quality. Um, and the lack of of a round round tip on the antennae, which I think I photoshopped out, so I don't know what the antennae look like on here. But, yeah. No, tell them what you did for Father's Day this year. <laughs> we were going to go see my dad, and there were storms coming, so we decided we're going to stay home for Father's Day, you know, yeah, the storms. To, I have to drive through it. We don't want to drive, yeah. Yeah. And then so. Angela decided to wake me up really early to say happy Father's Day <laughs> at like 1.30 in the morning <laughs> by using a tornado warning siren. Because there was a tornado warning, yes. <laughs> it's an odd way to celebrate Father's Day. It was not Day, my but... fault. And then we got to watch one of our trees in the front yard get Split. destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark got to spend Father's Day with his... Chainsaw <laughs> stuff, cutting up broken limbs. Doing very manly dad things. Exactly. <laughs> it was a very good manly and, man day. And then Father's Day afternoon, recovering from some pains. <laughs> sad, <so>. sad activities. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember a margarita involved, so. <laughs> but yeah, you know, fortunately it was just trees and yes. the flowers took a pretty big hit. My garden, garden. my hollyhocks, my poor hollyhocks. I'm so sad. Yeah, they were looking so pretty too. We were just <laughs> out there the other the other day, like literally the day before. And I was like, oh, hollyhocks. I just have always wanted to grow them. So excited. I finally, they came back from last year and they're just bigger and better than ever. They look so beautiful and they were all blooming up so nicely and they're all just blown over. Every single one was just... So we've tried to prop them up. And <sighs> they're not coming back. Well, yeah. I mean, they're, they're not what they were for sure. No. But some are still surviving. That's true. There's still some time the in the summer. Out there having a they day. don't care what they look like. But yeah, they're not like they're not looking like they did before. Um, I'm very sad. But so, yeah, it, it could have been worse. My brother yeah. lost... Part of his roof collapsed in and yeah. in Tulsa. They're out of power right now, so hopefully everybody stayed safe in those no storms. Hell. No. Earlier, no. A, yeah. a few days before this storm, there was a storm down in Hot Springs, Arkansas, where they had like softball size hail. Yeah, people lost. It just destroyed their cars mm -hmm. and roofs and stuff. So, unfortunately. No, we did. It could have been yeah. worse, that's for sure. That was pretty trippy watching that at 1.30 in the morning. And it was, that wind was 100 miles an hour in some places, it said. So I can see why. It had new sneakers. <laughs> it, it's new, really fast. it could run really fast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so we've done our leaves around here. We're going to let those dry before we do anything else. Um, again, can't really mess with anything while it's drying. So we can work on our butterfly while that is going on. And I want a brush that is large enough to fit in that butterfly and have a little extra room. I think that one might be what I'm looking for. That's a six angle bright. Though I don't know. Yeah, I'll go ahead and go with that. I'll go with that. Alright. If I had a filbert, I could I think I'm going to do a filbert actually because I it'll make softer rounded tips on my wings. So I'm going to go with the four four filbert. And this one was an eight flat that I've used for the rest of this, and the what three eighths inch will blender, blender, just blender now. Not sure what happened to Willow, but 
Okay. So I'm going to get some white or some yellow, I mean, and some white. And I did not need that much yellow because I'm really needing to tone this down. And I'm going to go ahead and add just a tiny touch of burnt sienna. That will kind of warm that color up into a more creamy yellow. Look how pretty that is now. So that's a nice dark version of what we want. I'm going to get a little bit more of that burnt sienna. Just the tiniest touch. That's too much. Like just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we've got a nice warm yellow. And that white is going to also help it be kind of more trans more um, opaque. I'm just going to go ahead and use that to fill in my butterfly. Even though he's got a lot of gray and things, we'll just have this. Yellow is one of those colors that you almost always going to need. You're going to need like a couple coats easily because you can see how transparent that is right there. So, um, and even with the white that I've added, it's you know, pretty transparent. So I'm going to add more white here. Just have a little bit more white to cover up those darker greens where I need it. So there, pull that wing out, round that tip out. Then generally this is just one long, I'm going to curve back in right there. Curving up towards us. Get rid of that chalk mark. And the nice thing about chalk is it's water soluble, so you mostly can, you know, it'll mostly just dis dissolve as you paint over it. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of it or it will mix with your color a little bit here. So, but as we put our second coat on, it will disappear altogether. Get a little bit more of that ultramarine un unbleached titanium version here. Might be, might be a peacock butterfly. Painted the peacock before. They they have a lot of bright colors. It's that orangey. Mm. Is it a like a female version of it or something? I don't know. I tried to do a Google Reverse. search off your painting, but it suggested more paintings to make. <laughs> <laughs> it's not looking realistic enough to call it a butterfly yet. titanium, some my ultramarine blue, and a burnt umber, and make a gray. So unbleached titanium, ultramarine blue, and gray. The nice thing about mixing our own gray like this is we know it's going to go with the rest of this painting because we've already used those colors in other places. So this is going to look really good on here, and I'm just pulling in along those edges and right into that wet yellow. It's actually doing a really nice job of blending for me. Nice. It's also got that yellow in my brush too. I haven't cleaned my brush out, so it's got a little bit of the yellow as well. And this is just a very light brush stroke. I'm not, not doing a whole lot here. Just setting my brush down and kind of flicking it towards the middle. Now this part is going to be a little bit more 
sticky, it feels like, so it's trying to dry on me, so I can't do a ton, a ton with it right there. Getting that feel though for it. It's looking good. Get a little bit more of the bleached titanium burnt umber. A little bit darker this time. Gonna make my wing marks. I'm doing this now because when I put my yellow on, I want to be able to go over this. So I'm kind of doing it now while it's wet. Then when I do my final coat on here, it'll, it'll be underneath. All right, doing really dark right in the middle on this body. And this should be the very last little bit that we have to fill in. A little bit of a head right there. down with it. What? This computer wants to restart for a does it take? Your computer? <coughs> I'm sorry? Your computer? Yeah. Fortunately not yours. No. Okay, getting some yellow here. in the yellow with this gray that I have in my brush. And I'm just gonna go over some of these areas and add a little fuzz, especially in this area right in here. And it's going on kind of dark, so I'm gonna wipe my brush out. Get that yellow. Of that gray. It's gonna look worse before it looks better, so just kind of know it's gonna look like a hot mess for a minute, and that's okay. Oh, this is the ugly stage. Every painting goes through it. Some worse than others. Getting some more of that gray that I'd mixed over here with the burnt umber and ultramarine blue, and mixing that with my yellow. If you're, if it's turning green, then you have too much blue in there to add a little bit more brown. So you want this to be kind of just a neutral gray. yellow, or that, the dark areas, I mean, with my yellow, and I'll blend it in a little bit. <clears throat> I think I have my, my shape off right here a little bit. My body is kind of curving in where it needs to go some more straight right here. So I'm going to go a little bit straighter with that body. two layers on there so I'm going to let it dry and grab my small blender and we'll finish the trunk of our branch there or tree trunk whatever not a tree trunk <sighs> bark <laughs> that's the word I'm looking for <laughs> it's all right <laughs> wrong wrong 
like I hear myself saying it in my brain. I'm a buzzer sound effect. (laughs) 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 Branch. Trunk. Trunk. No. Don't. You don't have a buzzer. Come with one. Uh oh. Applause. You can use that one instead. (laughs) We'll just pretend. Sensor. Oh, it's a little beep. Beeping. Yeah. Interesting. Thankfully, we're not that kind of show. We don't have to use that. <laughs> Ooh, a voice disguise. Mm. Do you know? All right, so using burnt umber and burnt sienna there. And I'm going to use my unbleached titanium. I'm going to add a little bit of blue again because that just grays it out a little bit, makes it a little bit more neutral. Maybe get a little bit of that white. And I've switched to the quarter inch because that's kind of the width of my branch here. And I'm going to very lightly dry brush. So I've got a ton of paint on my brush. See how it's kind of caked up on there? But it's going to very, very lightly kind of just scratch it. And this brush has kind of got a, is very firm and it's got a scratchy texture. So this will go on really nicely, thick, thickly for me. Or not, it'll dry brush it for me. Man, I'm having a war <laughs> today. Communication. Communication. Brain. Yeah, with it. Okay, so just lightly scraping here, very lightly. Adding some little things sticking out, little pokey things here and there. should be wider down here although I think the yeah no I don't know looks more narrow in the picture but I think this and just because it's going away from us okay and then I'm going to lightly okay getting the dark color here maybe a little bit of black spray my paints are getting sticky I'm doing a scratch in with some of that too sort of on the bottom edge of these branches I'm going to use the magenta with this brown burnt umber burnt sienna color use magenta and I'm going to add this highlight color that I was just using so it's going to be kind of a reddish light reddish color and add more white to it so it's more opaque because that Magenta is very transparent. Here we go. And just use variations of these colors. So sometimes using a little bit more brown, sometimes using a little bit more magenta. Sometimes there's a little bit of green here. I made that one a little thick. Might do a little green.
just a little bit of all those colors and then on here there's kind of an area where it's getting some sunlight. So got a little green on there with the magenta. section right there okay and then it's kind of coming out and around right here too splitting off to these are coming off here too so these leaves can kind of be going underneath the this just trying to make sure that everything has kind of a stem to it if it needs it full-on hot mess stage but you'd be surprised at how quickly it'll start to come together once we start adding our final details and highlights and things on our leaves so don't give up on me yet if you're following along and you're painting along and you get to this point you can start to doubt yourself but we'll get there you just have to kind of keep on trucking all right, so I'm gonna use the three eighths inch angle. This will give me kind of a good shape here for my blueberries. I'm gonna wipe down my, scrape off my palette here. <coughs> more room to work. All right. What? I think my microphone's working. For some reason, I can't hear myself. But anyways, mm. I was just going to talk about uh, Patreon while you're doing that. Okay. So for those who are new, we have a uh, place where you can support the channel and also get a bunch of cool stuff. So over at patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Uh, right now, the $2 level gets you access to... Um, traceables. Traceables. Thank you. That's the word. Now you've got my brain infected. I'll do the traceable from this finished image tonight. I make a line drawing of it so that you can transfer it onto your canvas and you don't have to draw at all. You can just start there. You use some transfer paper and I have in my beginner playlist, I have a um, video that says how to use traceables mm -hmm. in there. It's some birds in the sky. Go, sorry. Oh, no, you're just fine. In there. No, that's, I'll let you because you're doing a better job than me. Okay. <laughs> And then um, we just finished this weekend. We did our bonus video. We do once a month. Um, right now it's 2023. I think it's going to change next year. But um, for now, we're doing bonus videos. I'll show you what we did. We have several, several um, of these. I think there's four in this particular series. It's the 
seascape. So they take about four to five hours-ish, you know. I think this one was like around four hours to do on Saturday. And um, so they're more detailed than the ones that you get on YouTube. So if you're ready to kind of take it to the next level and learn some more advanced techniques and things, that's what this um, is for. We talked about composition a lot. I showed them how to check their work as they're working um, for values. values and things like that. So we did do things that we don't necessarily have time to do on a quick Tuesday night tutorial. Um, of course, we have over 700 probably, I think. Well, I, we have 725 different paintings that we've done. Out of those, I think about 600 are free on YouTube. And then the other ones are for our patrons. So about 150 or so, um, or ish, I don't know, roughly. I don't I don't know the exact number, honestly. Um, but we've been doing them since 2017 uh, for patrons, and so we have a bunch of the bonus videos. Those are the five dollar level, and then we also and they also get traceables. Uh, and then for step up, we do on Tuesdays or Thursdays. I have I'm missing a color here. Did I scrape off a color? Ooh. No, maybe not. I just mixed one there. No, yeah, it looks like you mixed a yellowish okay. color. Okay. Yellowish okay. White color. All right. Um. I was trying to see if I needed to add another color. But, yeah, so Thursdays, for the $10 level, we're working on this painting. And we work on one painting all month long. So they do about an hour to two hours a week until we get it done. So it's not like the bonus video where we do it all in one setting. This one is a lot more interactive. And we talk a lot more about, like I show, how to come up with the composition, like how I Photoshop them. Um, just all kinds of other things that um, I don't go over in our other lessons but then we do much more detailed work um, and uh, work on it this is the animals of North America we did um, two other three other in this particular series animals of the world series so we did Asia and Africa and South America already and so this is our North America one we we'll do Australia and Europe still um, potentially Antarctica but we usually kind of do a series and then do uh, something else in between. So in between we did some others. Um, if you want to see the one we did last month and the one the month before, um, if you go to my Instagram link down in the description, Ben just did a couple reels for me, um, shortened versions of those two um, $10 level paintings. And you can kind of see them from start to finish and how we do them. But anyhow, so back to work here. Um, One last note. So on, on all the Patreon stuff, you get access to everything at that level from February 2017. Right. Not and just this current month. No, and you also um, get access to any of the lower levels. So the $10 level gets all the $5 and $2 stuff, too. So in the $10, $10 level also does polls and they can get critiques for their work in my group they have a facebook group that's just for them so it's a lot more interactive and i spend a lot more time with those that those folks than i do anywhere else on my social media so all right i'm gonna get some burnt sienna with some green thalo green and cadmium yellow light and make a green that's like a bright green but has a little bit of neutral tone to it and I don't think this is going to be the brush for me I'm going to go with a different brush I was going to use that one but I don't think I'm going to I'm going to go back to this round brush here so I'm going to get that color that may not be bright enough so I'm going to get some white what? that's not a round brush did I say round? I thought, yes. okay, angle brush, sorry. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna start up at the tip here and just kind of lightly, very lightly, kind of just sketch in a main stem line. And then I'm gonna do a couple coming out. Broken lines, not, I don't want it to look like it's outlined very carefully so just kind of tapping the tip of it to get some details there but not not too obvious okay 
Then I'm going to go in and use the tip of the brush and just kind of dry brush in, kind of in between here. Now this is the kind of long version of it. If you don't want to do it that detailed, you can just kind of um, set it down and sort of swipe it in from the sides. And I'm kind of probably going to do a little bit of both. Some sections just kind of swiped and some sections a little bit more tappy-tappy. Because the tapping is kind of going in between around those veins. So we did the vein and we're going to tap around them um, and leave a little ditch of dark around the outside of the highlight. That makes it look like those veins are kind of set down in. So here's a vein here, and I'm going to go around the side of it, but not next to it, not right up next to it. Same thing here. There's a vein. Okay. probably shadowing too so we'll probably add a little bit of glazing um, which will help add some shadows to these back in so this is just our initial layer I'm going a little bit more detailed with these leaves than I normally do on leaves normally I'll just kind of set my brush down and sort of drag it in toward the center and call it good but these are a little bit more detailed so I'm gonna be a little bit more not a whole lot in this painting, you know, as far as detail goes, so I'm going to kind of let the leaves be a little bit more detailed than I normally do with them. along the edge there. So I'm going to kind of tap along that edge. They've got kind of a yellowish tint around the edge of them. That air is drying out my paint. Okay, let's do this one here. Curves up and dragging the tip. Very lightly light um, dry brushing these leaves. 
This is just giving them a little bit of texture. And I'm not being too fussy with this because I don't want it to look too... I find with leaves, they're kind of... They go real cartoony real fast. If you're too um, precious with each little line, you know, and make sure that everything looks just so, they start to look kind of fake. So kind of have to be a little bit... Not sloppy, but a little bit... Um, loose with it, you know, a little bit uh, more random with the placement of the details. Okay. brighter yellow. Maybe a little bit of that burnt umber in there, or burnt sienna, I mean. And I'm going to go along this edge here and really highlight and add add some details. Go back over that center line a little bit. lights kind of shining through and so it's doing some things here too. you get that first color down you can kind of come back in and see where you might need a little bit more light hitting your leaf a darker color so I want a little bit lighter <clears throat> a little bit of the yellow and a little bit of the burnt umber or burnt sienna added to the color there and then some of these I'm just gonna kind of highlight and call that good not do anything extra to them so this would be like an easier version here, you know, just kind of pulling in towards the center. And then you could always go back in and kind of add some highlights here and there. So this is just that kind of lighter version. It's sort of neutral. And then I need a kind of little
little bit brighter color, but you see how bright that is. It's just too much. So that burnt sienna just helps tone it down to a more neutral color. And I can add the yellow to brighten it back up, but now it's like a little bit more of a normal green. It's not so in your face. but not not as light not as dark but not as light either you know kind of things happening in here put in my strawberry leaf it's got that kind of variegation with those kind of serrated tips Eye off camera. Nope. Okay. <clears throat> Cut it in time, thank Just you. Okay. Just pay attention Thanks, son. Yeah. You're awesome. Like Not playing video games tonight? No. <laughs> I tell you what, that four hours went by quick Saturday. <laughs> I've told Mark multiple times because when we do our bonus videos, I don't need as much help with the cameras, you know. And he just sits in here for, you know, faithfully for four hours, basically doing nothing. And he's done it for so many years. And I finally was like, honey, you need to, like, just play your games or something and check in every now and then. And so he was in here playing video games this last <laughs> Saturday. So if you hear some clicking, clacking in Click, the background. Clicking in the background of the videos, you'll know what, what, that what was going on. <laughs> it was good. And I didn't end up needing help, so it was great. Those, those groups are a lot more quiet. They're just there to kind of learn to paint. Chatty. Sometimes they are, but my Thursday group's fairly chatty. All right. Good friends. Yes. People have been hanging out together for years. Over exactly. There. Just know each other. And Pretty cool. Yeah. That's one of the coolest things about doing this is getting to meet people from all over the world and you know I mean after so many years we've just formed friendships with people from I feel like if we ever did start traveling we'd have people to visit everywhere we went <laughs> you know it's pretty cool all right just putting in some random little leafy bits here and there to kind of break up the sameness but we're pretty close to where I want to be on the leaves and I'm going to glaze them oh I need to do this one down here so this one's more in the shadow so maybe use a little bit more of the blue So I think I kind of covered up a little bit too much of my dark in here. So I'm going to put that back in because I kind of miss having some dark in and around some of these areas. So I'm just going to kind of put back in some of the really dark. Just 
just here and there. And then green. All right, and then I'm going to use some of that dark green that I just mixed up with some glaze. And I'm going to glaze over some of these areas. I'm going to go right along my stem on either side and kind of on either side of my highlight veins there. And depending on how dark I do this glaze, the more it'll show up. And this glaze can work on any of these leaves where we want to add a little bit of shadow or folds or so kind of pick the areas where I've already got the light color and go in those darker areas and push push that color back and it makes them kind of pop pop out a little bit more. Speaking of pop, was your knee popping at the same time? It was kind Sound of my, effects. Kind of my ankle. <laughs> I mean, it's so weird that you can make so much noise but not feel it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to get a little bit brighter yellow, green here. A little bit of white, a lot of yellow, and do this strawberry leaf right here. get some kind of medium green here. And I'm liking that this is kind of a little bit different green because I feel like it's getting a little bit same same everywhere. So this is nice that it's kind of a, like a different tone. It's a little bit more saturated color.
just try brushing a few little highlight bits on different leaves here. And as I come around here, I'll glaze, glaze some of these back. Add that shadow. transparent layer of paint over <clears throat> so it's just glazing it's I'm adding glazing medium you can see how transparent it is on my palette here so I've got a little bit thicker color here that I can grab if I want to cover a little bit more but I'm going to start with kind of a thinner glaze and it just put it over the top and I can still see through everything underneath <coughs> I'm going to just tints tints my leaves so that they have a little bit of depth and adds that darker color in there without covering up everything I've already done. It's great for leaves because you can really add a lot of depth to them just by kind of going over them with this. And like in this leaf here, I'm going to add my glaze into my veins on with the glaze there make the leaves kind of stand out a little bit I'm going to just go in between where I've already got that lighter color adding this in Pretty happy with that. Um, I'm going to add some more highlights, but I need to let everything dry. Let's go ahead and work on our blueberries. So I'm going to get that ultramarine blue. And I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of the thalo blue too. Probably like one part to two parts. So two parts ultramarine blue, one part thalo blue. And then We'll add our burnt umber to tone it down. Not too much. And then I'm going to add just a touch of the touch of the magenta too to make them a little bit more reddish blue. Let's do a second coat on here. And I've switched to the quarter inch blender. This will really cover really well for me. So I'm going to do this quickly because I want to come back in there and add my second coat while that first coat is a little bit wet. Okay. All right, getting my white. Oh, that's a great color. The white will help you see what color you've got. I think that's going to be perfect. So I'm going to make a mid-tone and then a lighter tone. We'll start with the mid-tone, and this will really help us kind of shape out our blueberries. And I am not going to put these on carefully because they have that real fuzzy, kind of like velvety texture, and so there'll be some dark spots and some lighter spots in these. They're not really perfectly, perfectly, sh yeah, perfectly shadowed. Some purple too. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna 
I used some of that darker color and that lighter color, and that's kind of how all I'm going to do with those for the most part. I'm going to do this one that's kind of behind everything. Just leave a little bit of the dark where it's going underneath that other one. And then I can always grab a little bit more of my blue and either glaze or just darken it up. Now it's starting to lift right there because it's it's wet, so I may have to let that dry from that first layer. Make up some more of that color though, because I'm not gonna have nearly enough. Bit of phthalo blue, a little bit of ultramarine blue, tiny touch of magenta, and a little bit of burnt umber. Okay, that looks good. That's good. I'm just gonna keep on going here. I'm gonna give this guy its, because I'm gonna go over the top of that one. And there's another one that's under here that's just a little bit showing. I'm going to leave that little area dark right there. put it in right here. <laughs> and then um, I've got a lot of the lighter color in here too. So I'm going pretty dark with these. I need to lighten them up because they're quite a bit lighter than I've got them here. off. I'm just going to brush through there. Pull some of that off. Blend it in. This brush makes this kind of blending so easy. I make that guy a little bit bigger. Okay, let's keep on going here. Just first because that kind of need it shining through. because there's well, no Oak Island okay well yes there's no Oak Island in, in our hemisphere tomorrow is the longest daylight day of the year right so you got like more time than you did last week and so forth so 
Okay. But then the week after, then you'll have less time. So. Really. Yeah. Why? Why would I have less time if I'm spending the because same amount of be hours? Because there'll be less daylight. But no, you the still have to down, go to bed at the well, same time. That's true. The people down in Australia, their days will start getting longer mm. after tomorrow. I see. Going in with my darker color here and making that kind of poke out. good. They've got that kind of fuzzy look I'm looking for. Or velvety, I guess the word is, not fuzzy. Don't want to eat the fuzzy berries. fairly thick here and then just pushing it around and I don't know why this ended up being smaller over here this one was supposed to be big enough to cover cover that one I guess I can make it a little bit bigger I'm gonna make it bigger color. So I've got the darker on there. It's pretty thick. So I'm going to have to put this lighter color on pretty thick too. And I'm very lightly kind of tapping between them to try to blend them. If I press down really hard with it super thick like this, it's just going to scrape off the paint. So So there we go. And then let's do this one a little bit.
didn't do a very good job of drawing these. I don't know what I was doing here. Like, they don't look at all like a picture, but oh well. It's not that big of a deal, but it's just like I'm not really sure what I was thinking right here on this one. So I'm just putting back in some of that darker color in the center. to round out the shape so you've got to have some of that darker color kind of in the shadow areas drawing here. Okay. <clears throat> Let's work on our butterfly here. We need to let those dry a little bit. <clears throat> this is my voice tonight. So we're almost done with our butterfly, but we just got to give him a little bit more detail. I'm going to use this dark color that I was just using over here and darken up this area. Give him his spots. Just using the tip of the brush to draw it. Now this spot is kind of an oval because it's looking at it from the side. And this one is more rounded. And then there's two little bitty ones down here that are a little bit more brown. titanium here. I'm going to use a little bit of that black. <coughs> Maybe a little bit of my blue. I'm going to use it to lighten up that body. And then there's a bunch of little hairs here. I'm just going to tap Get 
some yellow. Mix that in with this gray brown that I've got on my brush. You can add some burnt sienna too if you want, but I'm happy with this color for now. Just whatever works. I'm just going to tap in my little hairs over the top. She's in that bladed, bladed edge of the brush. Make sure I've got my dark areas in here, and I might need to go a little bit darker in this background now that I'm looking at it. <clears throat> I think I need it a little bit darker right in here. So just using that burnt umber, burnt sienna, kind of darkening this whole area up a little bit. brushing this so it's not going on super solid. Kind of seeing a little bit of that yellow through it. And another layer of that out, outer border. Yellow is one of the colors, and everybody's got colors that'll do this, but yellow is one of the colors for me that I have a harder time seeing the values in. And so it's helpful to kind of look at my reference photo. So I'm seeing that it maybe is a little bit light still. I need to go a little bit darker. So I'm going to use a little bit of the yellow and that burnt umber and burnt sienna. And then add a little bit of that blue that created out a little bit. Again, not very much because I don't want it to go green. Although there is a slight tint, tint of green in here in places. So there we go. So that's going to be a little bit closer to what I want it to be. I'm just going to go over the top and just lightly drag it through. See how my brush is kind of breaking up and creating fuzzies for me. fuzzies with this. Getting some up here. Along the top there. Okay. I'm pretty close to where I want to be. Right here and here. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go even darker, just a couple spots here. Getting really close now. See how it's starting to come together. 
I'm gonna get a smaller brush, I think. I'm gonna get the one round here. I'm gonna use this darkish color that we mixed before. Maybe add a little bit of burnt sienna and yellow to it. It's a little bit warmer. Add a little bit of the unbleached titanium to lighten it up. And I'm gonna use this to kind of draw through do some very faint and I'm not not gonna try to do a bunch of veins in this guy I'm just gonna, gonna do some very faint veins through some of these areas in here Or weak. Uh oh. Are they having buffering? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm almost done with this. Gotta do a little bit more on the blueberries. Alright, so make my light yellow again. This is just light white with yellow, a little bit of a little bit of the burnt sienna. I'm just gonna brush through here and add some highlights. gray, yellow burnt sienna with that gray that we were using before. I'm going to go around this spot here with it. Kind of blend it in a little bit. Soften it up. Are we okay? I mean, there's nothing we can do about it, so right. it's just going to do what it's going to do. Yeah. brush now and move my hairs again. Get that lighter yellow. Just do my little tap in my little hairs. They're all through here. Over the top of the body. 
use a tip to tap in little bits around the eyes there. too much, you can always paint over it and try again. That looks pretty good though, I'm pretty happy with that. It's got it all underneath these wings here, kind of coming down. Kind of defines those. If your lines aren't going on thin enough, you can just really press down hard with your brush to get a better, thinner line. I noticed my lines were getting a little thick, so I just need to do that. I'm going to get a little bit of that darker color, tap that back in. Are we okay? Mm -hmm. Is it gone away? So I'm going to call that good. Let's do the bar the rest of the blueberries and we'll be done. I'm sorry about the buffering if you're watching live and it's messing up on you. I don't know what the problem is. Before. If you missed it, you can rewind. <laughs> I'm not gonna... Both blues, a little bit of magenta, and a little bit of burnt, burnt umber. white and very lightly brushing that on I've already got a little bit of the light blue on here so it's blending before they ripen too so you could have a little touch of green in some of them 
but they have a lot of that pink too. I'm going to go to this brush so I can get a little bit more specific detail, get a little bit cleaner with my lines, and go around this center part here at the middle. wasn't sure if I was going to go full realism with this one or not, but yeah, we've definitely gone into the realm of realism here. And that butterfly. Okay, going to get some of this light blue. A little bit of magenta. Use it around here, just dabbing it on. Getting that lighter blue here, deep. This area's got a little bit of like a burnt sienna. Add some of that in my stem too. Anything else that you need to do on your stems. A little bit more magenta. Adding a little bit of that magenta tone in some of these bottom berries here. The more magenta, the more kind of underripe they look. It's a great accent color for these. And it's in them, so, you know, there's that. We're just pulling out a little bit more color than what's maybe in our photo. And use a little glaze, it'll help kind of push things along. blend in 
some of these glazes that I'm doing. With the magenta and the darker blue. Okay. A little bit more of the lighter, lighter blue. Just to touch of highlight here and there. does take a few layers on here. We've probably done five or six layers now easily on these blueberries, but the more layers, the more depth you get, the more realistic they start turning out. So I think they're definitely worth the time. Uh, I'm going to use this do just a few more really bright highlights on here with the white. I don't have a ton of paint on my brush here, so I'm just going to kind of lightly highlight a few. I've already got this highlight on a lot of these, so it's not... Just kind of reinforcing the center of the highlight in some places. And this one doesn't have a ton. They don't all need highlights too because this will help kind of guide the eye around and tell it which ones are more in focus, which ones to look at, which ones have more detail. getting a little bit of light on them. A little bit more light. I'm using that darker medium blue to kind of just tap off the edges if any of them need it. We are really close to being done here. Pretty happy with how this is turning out. Oh, we did okay after all. <laughs> Never fear. I do wish, I, I do want to do a little bit more on my leaves, but we're getting late, so I'm going to probably just do a few little extra highlights on the veins here and there that we glazed over. Brighten them up, pop them back out. Again, not not too not too obvious. I don't want to have cartoon leaves. I don't want them outlined super heavily. Just a little bit of extra vein vein details.
these dark areas, so I'm going right in between the dark areas with this light, light color. detail in this one. I feel like I need a whole separate tutorial for leaves in now after this because I, re I really want to do more with these but I don't feel like I have time to devote to, to them. I think that leaves are kind of, at least for me, I kind of, they're a second afterthought, you know? Mm -hmm. So I need to give them a little bit more priority in the future just so I have some I spend all my time teaching how to do the flowers and I don't spend as much time with the leaves. thing that we could do um, is add some shading to my um, berries so I could go back in with my darkest color and my glaze and this will help just make them more uniform oops that's my three hour mark since, well, since I said it, I said it before the show. I've been in the studio for three hours, not filming for the whole time. Mm. <laughs> Setting up, got us to set up. Mm -hmm. So just kind of around the edges a little bit, anywhere where you need a little bit more kind of separation between your colors maybe, or shadow drop down. Great little final addition of color and detail. You see the ones that we've done it to and versus the ones we haven't. Just adds to this a little bit more of a overall finished look. do any kind of finishing up if there was any other questions or anything. Did we do all the questions? Yes. Okay. I'm going to start try taking more questions during the show again. Kind of stop doing that for a while, but I sort of miss the conversations at Sparks, so I think we're going to try to do that as much as I can 
and still stay on task. That's my problem. I get sidetracked really easily. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. There we have it. I'm going to sign it. Good job. Thanks. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with us again. Thanks for our patrons who support us over on Patreon. If you want information about that, you can click um, down in the description. There's links to Patreon. We can check that out. And join us for some of our more lengthy advanced tutorials. It's a little taste of what we do. We use YouTube as a way to kind of advertise our Patreon, but also Patreon helps keep our YouTube free. So it's kind of a win-win for everybody. <laughs> you know, I couldn't afford to just do all free lessons all the time, but because of Patreon, I can. So I don't have to do, you know, courses where you have to pay for, you know, $20 for one video or whatever. Um, we make it, try to make it very reasonable. And the nice thing is we've got enough patrons that enough of you have signed up for it that it makes it affordable affordable and accessible. and accessible yeah and and I can and it makes sense you know for as a business too you know to do it that way and we there's a lot of different ways to get your art out there nowadays and there's a lot of different teachers out there so we appreciate those who have stuck with us and enjoy our videos and leave a comment and share them I appreciate it if you if you liked today's video if you share it give it a thumbs up leave it a comment subscribe all that good stuff and uh, yeah we'll be back next time with another video we'll have next week we're going to be painting some sunflowers from our garden as well so <laughs> got a lot of good pictures this year of our garden it's been going going good except for the last storm <laughs> Notwithstanding, we did get pictures before it though, so I think we're gonna have some hollyhock picture videos in our future too. Hopefully, Good. yeah, we'll be painting some of those too. All right, thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your day, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.